Hello everyone, interesting information today regarding the California assault weapon ban and some registration shenanigans that went on back in 2018. Today we're going to be talking about Sharp versus Becerra, a court case that was settled partly by the Firearms Policy Coalition and some new update that we have about this. This is going to be a fairly short video, so bear with me. We're going to talk about the facts of it. And then we're going to kind of talk about whether or not I think you should register your firearm as an assault weapon in the state of California, what that means, and whether or not it would be worth it to you. Now, keep in mind, I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. I'm just a guy in my office talking about some stuff, and maybe that will allow you to be in a position to make the most educated position for yourself, decision for yourself. For this article from the Firearms Policy Coalition was initially posted on March 18th of this year, so we knew that this was gonna happen. So for those of you that aren't aware of what's going on, in 2016, bills were passed. One of those bills was regarding the bullet button assault weapons. For those of you that have no idea what I just said, let me loop you in real quick. The state of California had a law regarding bullet buttons, meaning that the way to get around the assault weapon ban in the state of California, which was considered legal, was in order to remove the magazine on your AR or AK type firearms, you would have to take the tip of a bullet, press the mag release, or use a tool to release the magazine. This law was later changed to be defined as by needing to disassemble the firearm action. So in 2016, the bullet buttons went away. This meant that in 2018, people had to register their firearms as an assault weapon with the state of California. Now, for those of you that are familiar with how the government works, it did not go over so well. It did not go so smoothly. The state of California ran a very failed, flawed, and dysfunctional system, a system that made it so that people who attempted to legally register their firearms in their current configuration as an assault weapon were unable to, were unable to get any support from the state of California being redirected to automated phone call sites, and some people were even able to somehow access personal information from people who actually did successfully register their firearm, including make, model, serial number, as well as photos of the guns. This case was settled, and the California Department of Justice in Sharp versus Becerra had to both agree to reopen their registration process and pay the legal fees of the people involved in the lawsuit. So, what is going on? We'll talk about that in just a second. I do want to say thank you to everyone that supports this channel. I <laughs> have been uh, grinding through the little bit of the uh, lack of favoritism that comes from being on YouTube and the algorithm. I really appreciate that the same people continue to tune into these videos regardless of the fact that they are not giving you any notification that I upload, regardless of the fact that YouTube is gonna to continue to unsubscribe people. This channel has been functioning great and I'm happy to see the difference that we've been able to make when it comes to educating people about guns. So let's get back into this. Sorry for the little uh, delay. Pursuant to court order, California Department of Justice announces reopening of the bullet button assault weapon registration period. Now, in compliance with the federal court order, the California Department of Justice today announced that the period to register eligible assault weapons will reopen at 9 a.m. on January 13th, 2022, and close at 9 a.m. on April 12th, 2022. The time frame to register these firearms originally ended on July 1st. However, the DOJ is reopening the registration window to comply with the federal judge's order in March that requires the department to accept applications from individuals who were unable to register their firearms during the original period due to technical issues with the registration website. Now, here are the requirements if you choose to register it as an assault weapon. The person would have been eligible to register an assault weapon under subdivision B of Penal Code 30900. The person lawfully possessed each assault weapon they seek to register before January 1st of 2017, meaning that it would have had to be away from the gun store after the 10-day wait in your possession prior to January 1st of 2017. The person verifies under penalty of perjury that they attempted to register the assault weapon prior to the original registration deadline of midnight July 1st, 2018, but they were unable to do so because of technical difficulties during the registration process, and the person registers it prior to the deadline in 2022. 
So they're gonna be using the same process and the same restrictions that go from the first go around. So now that you understand what is happening, I'm gonna kind of give my input on what might make you choose to either register your gun or not register your gun as an assault weapon. Now, here is a few things that you would want to consider that would probably keep you from choosing to register your firearm as an assault weapon. The first of it, of all, being that these laws are ridiculous and we shouldn't comply with them, but we'll skip past that one. So the real first one is this. When you register your firearm as an assault weapon, there are certain restrictions that go on it as far as transportation of that gun. Normally, when you have a firearm and you wanted to take it out to the range or take it to a buddy's house, you would be able to legally transport that firearm, maybe stop at a gas station, maybe stop, get food, and then continue on your journey. When you're transporting an, a registered assault weapon in the state of California, not only does it always have to be unloaded in a locked container, even if it's a rifle or a shotgun, unloaded in a locked container, you can also only go to or from legal locations. For example, going to a gun store, bringing it to a friend's house to show them, going to a gun range. You technically, the way the law is written, would not be able to do things like stop for gas, go into a gas station to grab some snacks, make any stop along the way that isn't a lawful location to possess it, and you would actually be breaking the California Penal Codes. So that's one thing to consider. In addition to the fact that transportation of them always needs to be unloaded in a locked container, so handguns or pistols in the state of California unloaded in a locked container. That's how you have to transport them. Rifles and shotguns in the state of California need only be transported unloaded. So that's something to consider as well. When you actually register it as an assault weapon, as a bullet buttoned assault weapon, a classification that has no real legal definition as far as the penal code is considered, you would not then be able to take off your bullet button. This is something a lot of people thought was gonna be possible back in the original 2016 days. I know a lot of people, myself included, bought a few extra lowers because we thought, hey, we might be in a position where we can register this gun as an assault weapon, a firearm which the state is already aware that I own, and then I would be able to take my bullet button off and have a unneutered firearm in the state of California. That is not going to be possible. The state of California, the Department of Justice, has said that once you register it as an assault weapon, as a bullet button assault weapon, removal of the bullet button would be creating an illegal assault weapon. Doesn't really make sense to me, but it's something to consider. Would I personally recommend that you register your firearms as an assault weapon in the state of California? I'm going to generally say no. I think the only scenario where it would maybe be worth it for an individual to register their firearm as an assault weapon, which I still don't think you should do, I could see the argument being made for firearms that don't have an easy ability to convert to a legal configuration. So for example, with my AR pistol, it's very easy to make those fixed magazine. It's also very easy to convert them from fixed magazine to non-fixed magazine when I leave California. With my AR rifles, it's very easy to make them featureless some firearms might not have an easy or capable way to convert it from a bullet button firearm to a functional firearm that would be compliant with the new law. Meaning that many people have been storing their firearms disassembled for years now, except for when they leave California, meaning that they wouldn't have an easy way to safely shoot it at the range without potentially getting caught with an unregistered assault weapon. And I know I'm using air quotes a lot, but it's mostly so that I can illustrate my distaste or my lack of approval of the definitions that the state is using. But when discussing legal situations, you kind of have to use the legal definitions that the state has given us. I understand it's frustrating, but at the end of the day, who cares if it's an assault weapon? The Second Amendment acknowledges your right to own an assault weapon. It doesn't grant it anything. The Second Amendment does not grant you anything. It is merely writing on a piece of paper that allegedly acknowledges the fact that you have the right to bear arms. And that's it. 
So would you benefit from this? I think in very, very niche situations, you would benefit. Now, what kind of people would absolutely not want to register their gun as an assault weapon? Well, I would say most people, but if we're being more specific, there are many people in possession right now legally of firearms that are not actually registered in their name. If you purchased an AR-15 rifle in 2013 or long before then, that gun would actually not be registered in your name. Rifles and shotguns were not actually registered with the California Department of Justice before 2014, I believe. So if you own a gun that isn't actually registered in your name, but is legally owned by you, that has some intangible benefit to the state not knowing that you specifically own that firearm. The only way for them to know that you have that specific firearm would be to do a trace from the original manufacturer, which they don't know that you have, and trace it back to you. That's a huge benefit in my mind. I have AR-15s, I have firearms that I legally possess that the state doesn't know about. Where are they? I'm not gonna fucking tell you. And that's as simple as that. Why would you register a firearm that the state doesn't already know about? For the people that have firearms that are already currently registered, so if you bought a stripped lower or if you bought a complete rifle after 2014, I think there's a different argument that could be made. Would I think that you should register it as an assault weapon? No, I don't think you should. But the state of California is allowing it. <laughs> but uh, what you ask for permission for is up to you. What you do without asking for permission for is up to you. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. I'm just trying to bring you some information so that you can make the right decision for yourself. You all know the drill. Have fun. Be safe. Stay dangerous. Peace. Again, big thank you to everyone that's still supporting this channel. Um, the algorithm has not been pleasant to me, but I'm happy that I can still recognize so many names, so many faces, people still commenting that have been around for a long, long time. I appreciate your support. Anything that you comment, anything that you share, anything that you like supports the algorithm. Double check that you're still subscribed. I've been seeing a lot of people saying that they have been subscribed, I've been seeing a lot of people saying they're not getting notifications. And you know, I have no hope on the notifications ever actually being delivered to everyone that has notifications on, but it is what it is. Thank you, everyone.